Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The Flat Earth Movement is one of the weirdest beliefs to re-emerge in recent years, and many of us didn't even think it was serious at first. Flat Earthers believe the Earth is a flat disk, with the Arctic Circle in the centre, with Antarctica being a wall of ice around the rim, 150 feet or 45 metres in height. Even though all credible modern evidence and science says otherwise, even though we do have photographs from space, and even though so many scientific principles are intrinsically linked to the model of the solar system, proponents of Flat Earth say that science and the pictures are all an elaborate hoax, involving multiple governments to cover up the truth. They claim that employees of NASA guard the ice wall to stop people from climbing over and falling off the disk. They say gravity is an illusion, and that objects don't accelerate down, and I read somewhere that they think the Earth accelerates upward at 32 feet per second squared, driven by a force called dark energy. At this stage the whole ideology is pretty detailed, and sometimes to some people, such elaborate detail makes things seem more credible and believable. Some people are blinded with science. Well, in this case, not science. Anyway, in 2021, the Flat Earth Society claimed 500 members, and apparently there are many more believers that want nothing to do with the society, because to them, even the Flat Earth Society is a conspiracy, created by government agencies to make the Flat Earth movement look bad. I wonder what gave them that idea. But you don't need a Flat Earth Society to make the ideas look ridiculous. It's the fundamental basic concepts of the idea that do that all by themselves. So, we have Flat Earthers who believe the Flat Earth Society is a conspiracy, and so the Society went on CNN to say they were not a government controlled body, and this was to help clear up the matter. But, that's what they would say, right? It's received millions of views on YouTube, both with evidence for and against, discussions, debates and so on, and although I imagine that some people are viewing these videos with some kind of social intrigue, I have to say, I still see dozens and dozens of comments on videos that say the Earth is flat, even on my recent series on the Younger Dryers. What I wanted to say in this video is that even our ancient ancestors knew the Earth was not flat. It didn't take the great minds of NASA to come to this conclusion, and back in 1980, on the TV series called Cosmos, before I was even born, Carl Sagan explained how ancient people came to the conclusion the Earth was not flat. Just a few days ago I saw the clip going viral on Twitter with Sagan explaining how the Libyan Greek scholar and chief librarian of the Library of Alexandria, a man named Eratosthenes, figured out the Earth was spherical more than 2,000 years ago. Eratosthenes was born around 276 BC, and during his life he produced impressive works in astronomy, mathematics, geography, philosophy and poetry. Eratosthenes was fascinated with geography and planned to make a map of the entire world, but to do so he realised he needed to know the size of the earth. He did this by observing how the angles of shadows differed at different points on the earth, measured at the same time of day. Eratosthenes had made the assumption that the sun was so far away that its rays were essentially parallel. So he wanted to measure the angles of the shadows that were cast at two different points on the Earth, to work out the size of the planet. With his knowledge that the city of Alexandria was pretty much due north of Syene, now Aswan, and knowing that Syene was located on the Tropic of Cancer, whilst not exactly correct with his assumptions, they were good enough to make quite accurate measurements. His basic method was sound. 
Eratosthenes hired professional surveyors trained to walk with equal length steps to measure the distance between the cities of Alexandria and Syene, which was around 5,000 stadia. Then Eratosthenes and his workers measured the angles of shadows at both locations at noon on the summer solstice. He not only had clear evidence the Earth was not flat, but he could now also estimate the radius and circumference of the Earth, which was actually pretty close to the measurements we've calculated in the modern era. He was more accurate than the Greeks that came after him, who repeated the same experiment. I don't think I can explain it better than Sagan himself, so here he is to show you exactly what Eratosthenes did. Here is a map of ancient Egypt. I've inserted two sticks or obelisks, one up here in Alexandria and one down here in Syene. Now, if at a certain moment each stick casts no shadow, no shadow at all, that's perfectly easy to understand provided the Earth is flat. If the shadow at Syene is at a certain length and the shadow at Alexandria is the same length, that also makes sense on a flat Earth. But how could it be, Eratosthenes asked, that at the same instant there was no shadow at Syene and a very substantial shadow at Alexandria? The only answer was that the surface of the Earth is curved. Not only that, but the greater the curvature, the bigger the difference in the lengths of the shadows. The sun is so far away that its rays are parallel when they reach the Earth. Sticks at different angles to the sun's rays will cast shadows at different lengths. For the observed difference in the shadow lengths, the distance between Alexandria and Syene had to be about seven degrees along the surface of the Earth. By that I mean, if you imagine these sticks extending all the way down to the center of the Earth, they would there intersect at an angle of about seven degrees. Well, seven degrees is something like a 50th of the full circumference of the Earth, 360 degrees. Eratosthenes knew the distance between Alexandria and Syene. He knew it was 800 kilometers. Why? Because he hired a man to pace out the entire distance so that he could perform the calculation I'm talking about. Now, 800 kilometers times 50 is 40,000 kilometers. So that must be the circumference of the Earth. That's how far it is to go once around the Earth. That's the right answer. Eratosthenes' only tools were sticks, eyes, feet, and brains, plus a zest for experiment. So straightforward, mathematical, and logical, and thankfully for the good of humanity, the tweet has had more than 236,000 likes and around 40,000 retweets. Flat Earthers are still arguing against this, saying the Sun is a lot closer and also a lot smaller, and so of course the shadows are different. But the thing with crazy ideas is that someone will always find a reason to doubt the obvious. You can find the answer to all of the questions if you look hard enough. I also saw people saying, where's the proof that Eratosthenes did this? like they have to assume he was a liar to make themselves feel better. I also saw some comments that said, how did they know they measured the two shadows at the same places at the same time? Someone said, I just looked at a map. Seems like the spot he was pointing to was over 350 miles away. How could they possibly know for sure what was going on at both locations at the same time? Some basic research can show how people of the ancient world knew exactly how to keep time. And even if the ancient Greeks had no idea what time of day it was, they could have measured the shortest shadows cast from sunrise to sunset on one given day at both locations and then compare them. But obviously, the ancient Greeks understood full well exactly what time of day it was. I'm not here to debunk the Flat Earth movement, I think it's debunked itself in recent years, but if you do want to learn more, there are loads of videos on YouTube, with many from Professor Dave Explains. 
All I wanted to highlight in this video is how the ancient Greeks measured the Earth and for those not on Twitter, to show you the brilliant clip from Carl Sagan. A great visual explanation for how the Greeks tackled scientific problems more than 2000 years ago. And also to remember Eratosthenes, a great mind who devised a clever method of estimating the size of the Earth. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.